Hello, it's Charles again. Um, today I'm going to do a couple of quick how-tos on the Apple IIe keyboard. And this is my uh, this is pretty much my donor keyboard for parts and experimentation. You can see I've got a couple of replacement keycaps here from uh, various sources. And uh, what I'm going to do today is first thing, I'm going to show you how to take off a key switch one that maybe is not functioning properly and how to replace it and then also how to replace the uh, the bulb here once it has burned out or if you want to uh, maybe upgrade it with an LED. Pretty simple process. Um, it's going to be some basic soldering today with uh, my trusty adjustable soldering iron here. And then just to show you um, how it would work, I've also got a desoldering uh, solder sucker type thing here. So it's uh, spring loaded and it'll go ka-chunk and remove the old solder. Uh, I prefer that to the, the copper braid just because copper braid doesn't quite get all of the, uh, the stuff out of the through holes as well as the solder sucker does. But your mileage may vary, and if you're more comfortable with one over the other, then use what you've got. So first things first, uh, let's say we're going to replace this Apple key here, or open Apple key. For purposes of this demonstration, let's just say that it's not hitting anymore, and uh, we want to replace it with uh, another key switch. So first thing, we can take the key cap off and set that aside, because we don't need that right now. We're going to take this switch right here and look on the underside of the keyboard obviously the first step that you want to make is to take this out of your 2e what i like to do when i'm doing this kind of thing is i will start by putting some extra solder onto the switch and these two contacts here are the uh, the switch itself. So I'll add a little bit of extra solder to it just to loosen up some of the old stuff. Yeah, there we go. Just some fresh solder melts through a little bit hotter temperature and will work to loosen up and melt the old solder from the 80s. And from there, you can either, again, use your copper braid or, like I said, I will use my solder sucker here. And what this does is it's basically spring-loaded. There's a plunger here, and it's released with this button. And the tip of it heats up. This one actually gets really hot, which is helpful for desoldering some things. Um, but it's also a little dangerous. If you're not careful, you can add too much heat to something and uh, actually damage it. So if you're trying to take things apart, you don't necessarily always need to be very careful, but in this case, trying not to take the traces off the board. Just the solder. So here goes those guys. And you see it made a couple of pretty nice clean holes there. The other thing I can do is take the solder sucker tip and just work it around to get the ends of that switch clean. And then I'll put this guy aside because I don't need him anymore. So once you've got these holes nice and clean, you can use your, your solder sucker or your, your braid to get all the solder out. Then you take flip over so you can access the switch itself and it was not going to come out on its own but it should wiggle free once those once those solder joints are clear should wiggle a little bit but what you're going to need to do is you can take something like a spudger or even just a Exacto knife, 
So as you can see, yes, this keyboard is pretty filthy. There's lots of crud and dust and hair and who knows what under there. So it wouldn't hurt to wash my hands after I'm done here. Take this little clip here, see how it wiggles? And this clip here, push them in at the same time and the whole switch should pop out. Ta -da. So looking at the switch itself, there's the post, and often you'll find these that are broken, where the post is broken off. And in another video, I'll show you how to replace just the post without having to throw out the whole key switch. But in this case, let's say you've got a key switch that doesn't work. And you might try at this point cleaning it, take it apart with let's see a clip on this side, get a little bit closer there, you can see. And then again on the other side, and that's what's holding this key switch together. But again, that will be the next video on how to get inside here to replace the post or to clean off the contacts. And then those are the two posts that go into the PCB on the keyboard. So let's say you've got a replacement for this part and paid someone on eBay or you have a, another sacrificial keyboard that you removed the post from or the key switch from. And uh, now we just reverse the process. So you take your key switch, put it through the hole. You can see there the holes for these posts. They go right in there. So line this up properly and should just go in and snap. If you look on the other side, the contacts came right through there. So as I said, it's just a reverse of the other process. So we take soldering iron, a little bit of new solder, one drop there, one drop there, and all done. And that's how you replace a key switch on an Apple IIe. Pretty simple. Now right next to that key switch, this is another piece that often fails on these old keyboards, is the LED. Well, it's not an LED. It looks like one, but it's actually a tiny little flashlight bulb. And that's why they burn out. So inside there is a filament, and just like any light bulb, eventually that filament will burn out. Or if it's been rattled around and shaken up enough, um, like some of these old machines are, then uh, this guy's pretty useless. If you happen to find a replacement part that is a working bulb, it's most likely worth its weight in gold. I say that because these things are pretty light and, uh, you know, not a whole lot of gold. But they are pretty expensive if you can find an original part just for this guy that is a uh, working bulb. Rather than spending our time and money on eBay, as I mentioned before, we're going to replace this little bulb with a modern LED. Now most LEDs, unless you get them in some sort of special package, are not going to be able to handle the full 5 volts uh, and amps that are going into the keyboard. Enough to light up that little flashlight bulb is not, uh, not very healthy for an LED. So in order to get it to work, we'll need to add a resistor in line so that it cuts down on the current. This is a uh, pretty standard LED. It's a 5 millimeter. This one's green. To keep the LED from blowing out, we're going to add in line a 100 ohm resistor. It should still be nice and bright, but that's going to keep the LED from um, burning out too soon. Obviously, if it's too bright, you increase the resistance here, somewhere in the range of 100 ohms to a kilo ohm or so, and you'll, uh, you'll end up with still a nice bright LED that's not going to pop on you when you turn your Apple II on. So how do we do that? First, let's look at the LED. On the base of the LED, you'll see there are two legs. One is longer than the other. There you can also see 
on the body of the LED, if you look very closely, there is a flat part right near the base. All the rest is round. But that flat part is going to be your ground or negative. So that's the short leg of the LED. The positive side is going to be the longer leg. And that's how you can line up where you're going to put your resistor and which direction you put your LED in. As for resistors, there's no polarity in a resistor. Each side can go either way. So the first thing that I'm going to do is take a look at the original bulb. And it has the two legs there. And it's intended to go into the keyboard here. So I will trim the two legs of the LED so that they're not any longer than that. Now that the two legs are the same length, I have to look at the little flat spot to see that's ground. So I'm going to bend that leg out of the way. And I'm going to cut the positive side even shorter. Because that's where I'm going to attach the resistor to limit the current going into the LED. This is where our little helping hand comes in to hold the LED in place. First thing I like to do with this sort of stuff I'm going to add a little daub of solder on the positive lead. So that gives the resistor something to attach to. And again, I'm going to pick one of the leads on the resistor. It doesn't matter which one, there is no polarity on these. Just cut it nice and short. The idea is to join the two like so. So in the end, I have a resistor with a nice short leg there. And that can be my LED bulb replacement. So again, a little dab of solder there. Now the real tricky part is lining these two pieces up. And since they both have just a little bit of solder on them already, all I have to do is melt those two pieces of solder together. And now I have a very quick, dirty, probably not up to NASA or military standards, but good enough. A nice solid join there. And then what we can do is trim this leg so that it's short enough to go in and it matches the length of this other leg on the LED. And so there's the final result. A little tiny solder join there. And you can get LEDs that have an inline resistor, but I figured I'd make my own. If you want to make it even prettier, you can put a little piece of heat shrink tubing over the resistor. Get a little bit more stability. And then with something like this, I usually just use the heat from the iron itself to shrink the tubing. So 
So got a nice little package here. So this just needs to plug into there. But how do I tell which one is ground and which one is voltage? I could just do trial and error, plug it in and see which way it lights up. But looking on the bottom, I can see nicely labeled here, GRD is ground. And that line goes right through there. And that is the pin that's closest to the bottom of the keyboard. So that's going to be ground. So I take my LED. And remember this resistor is on the voltage side and this leg is the ground side. Plug it in. Just make sure it's nice and secure and it's not gonna come out. Wobble, wobble, wobble. And the tip of the LED sticks out a little bit higher than I'd like. So what I might do is redo that one so that the legs are just a little bit shorter. But this one will work. It's at least good enough to test. And here it goes. Nice.